Somebody told me forever. Somebody gave me my heart. Somebody said it was over. Someone was wrong from the start. Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? <laughs> we have no idea, but Crystal Lisberg is going to tell us all about it in the final of Dance Melody Grand Prix on February 13th, and she's with us right now. Hello. Hi guys. <laughs> You're looking amazing. How are you? Thank you. I'm really good. I'm so excited. I uh, I mean, I couldn't be happier right now. <laughs> That's great. Now we read that DR actually approached you to participate in Dance Melody Grand Prix.、Um, did you have to think about it, or was it an instant yes? No, I mean I I needed to hear the song first so that I knew that I could be true to myself when I was gonna was go on stage for so many people because I am an artist、uh, before the Melody Grand Prix, so it was it was important that that I was、uh, keeping real to myself. And they gave you three options for songs, I believe.、Uh, why did you decide on "Who Needs a Heart"?、Um, I mean, I think they, the the two other songs wasn't completely right for me. So when I heard "Who Needs a Heart," it's like a big ballad, and that's what I've been doing previously. Like I love big ballads, which yeah.、Um, so so when I heard it, I just. Thought, yeah, that's that's the song I need to sing, and the lyrics are also so beautiful. So, and I could relate to the lyrics, which was amazing. Oh, <laughs> how do you relate to them? Well, who haven't hasn't gotten their heart broken? I mean, <laughs> we have. <laughs> so, so I just、uh, felt that the song can relate to a lot of people, and or the people can relate to the song, and.、Um, Also, it's. I feel that it's just going for your dreams. Now, your song is written by Sarah Lundgren and Jonas Gladnikov.、Uh, yeah. Curious, have they spoken to you about the meaning or given you ideas for staging or anything? I mean, right now I've just met Sarah, so I'm gonna meet Jonas for the competition because he lives in. I think he lives in Finland, and he's been. Traveling for Eurovision, he has some other songs that has been in Eurovision, so he has been a busy man, I think.、Um, but Sarah has told me that the song is、uh, about this bad breakup and also just going for your dreams and and so on. So and it was important for them that I was like, I could feel every word that I'm singing in the lyrics, and and I do. It was very easy to relate to, I think. <laughs> and what are the Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> and the staging.、Um, well, we were agreeing on that it has to be something beautiful and not too sexy, something classic and beautiful. So that's what we're going for. <laughs> Just like you, it should be easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly.、And、what about the other two songs?、Um, will we hear you release them? No, you won't. They're actually in the competition、oh. with two different singers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you allowed to reveal what those songs are? No, I don't. No, I don't want to re- reveal that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, but I think all the songs are really good in the competition, so it's gonna be a hard competition this year. So, but I'm just gonna go for giving my best and my all to、um, to this song and the best performance I I can possibly can、uh, perform. So. <laughs> and do you know any of the other contestants personally already? Yeah, I actually do. I know Muri、uh, and Mario,、uh, who are gonna sing t-、uh, two stars in Danish、uh, to to Stiana.、Um, so, so I know them, which was really funny because we didn't know about each other that we were gonna compete against each other. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea of going to Eurovision,、uh, why does that appeal to you? I mean, I think it's every girl's dream. It's just so amazing. You get to sing on this big stage, perform for a lot of people who get to know you, and also maybe they're gonna be interesting and hear some some other stuff that you did. So I think it's a really good opportunity.、Uh, 
um, just to to come out with the music and also just you know be treated like a star. <laughs> and so you, it's really really cool. You've actually released, I think, two singles already. Yeah, I have. I think it's three now or four. Uh, three of the singles are on the internet. Yeah. And could you quickly tell us about them? I mean, um, without you was probably the one who got most attention. Um, it was a song I wrote about a, a really bad breakup. Um, so you know, I'm just the artist that when I feel something, I really have to write it down and just get it out, and and that's how I write my music. <laughs> Um, it's a little bit more dark than Who Needs a Heart, um, but I think Who Needs a Heart is a really refreshing for me to get mm. something that is a little bit more light. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And your father, he's actually a very well-known country music singer on the Faroe Islands. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Has he influenced um, you musically? Yeah, I started actually because of he uh, song country. I started singing country when I was a little girl. My first CD was like Patsy Cline. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I listened to this Patsy Cline CD like all day long and learned all the songs. <laughs> and um, then we also toured on the Faroe Island already when I was like 12 years old and we toured until I was like 18. And we were just this perfect duo, <laughs> father and daughter. So, and yeah, the people loved it. So, and then afterwards I started like doing my own stuff. I, I felt I had to do something that I could like uh, become an artist with. Yeah. <laughs> and the Faroe Islands, I mean, I guess you could say it's a relatively small community. So are you quite well known within the islands? Yeah, I guess you can say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. So, uh, and people are going crazy about this on the Faroe Island that I'm going to be in the, the Danish Melody Grand Prix. They're just so proud because uh, they, it isn't very often that you get a Faroe East person with uh, such a big competition. So, and also that I can rep represent both Denmark and the Faroe Island is really huge for me and makes me really proud. And you, of course, have done this before on the Danish X Factor. Yeah, I have. <laughs> what was the reaction back home when that happened? I mean, they, they, everybody was so uh, supportive and just thought it was amazing and everyone was so excited. But um, I went out before the live shows um, because one of the judges, she thought that, um, or the judge that I got, she thought that I was already an artist and she, she didn't want to change that. And she was like, you were already uh, ready to go out on stage, so I, I just think you're, you're going to do that now. So, I mean, it was kind of shock for me because I, I wanted to be on that stage at that moment. But now I think it's really good because I was only 20, 22 years old and I, I was really green and naive. So, and after that, I just started looking within myself and really started to do my own music and find out what I was like, why I was as an artist. So I think that was a good push. <laughs> And you, yeah, of course, the right direction. you've got many talents. You also work at Specsavers. Yes, I do. <laughs> so are you an optician? Yeah, yeah I just got my um, degree. Yeah, I, I, just, uh, I just finished as an optician. So, so that's really exciting. And I'm going to keep working in Specsavers. <laughs> so what got yeah. you interested in the human eye? I love biology and anatomy and... I, I didn't want to be a doctor because I thought that was going to take too much time. So uh, so I just looked on the internet um, and found out that this optician was, uh, was, uh, was actually something you could do here in Denmark. And I just, yeah, I went for it. I was like, I'm maybe going to like be there for two weeks because I don't know what I just signed up for. But now I'm done with the education. So I'm in a really, really happy. <laughs> So and that was the right decision for me. <laughs> it was revealed over the summer that there are politicians in the Faroe Islands who would love the Faroe Islands to sing at Eurovision. I'm curious, what are your thoughts? You know, should the Faroe Islands be able to sing on its own? Um, I mean, I think it would be really cool, of course, but 
I don't know. I I also like the idea that we're with Denmark because I think we're going to just stand a little bit stronger together with Denmark. And also because the Faroe Islands is such a small country, I don't know how it would be with all these people if like we won <laughs> or something that all these people would come to the Faroe Island. <laughs> that would be totally crazy. But I mean, it would also do us really, really proud. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And how would you say the Faroese music scene is different than the Danish music scene? I think that the Faroese uh, people are really inspired just by the nature. And I mean, it's, it's kind of rainy often. So I think we're just sitting inside and just playing the guitar and the pianos and making songs. And then we come together. Um, I mean, almost everyone know each other so it's also really easy to get the right contacts and to say hey i have this song could i maybe perform it at your show or something and people are like yeah come on so so they're really sp supportive of each other the musicians yeah and are there um, and i don't i mean i've only been living in denmark since 2012 and it's such a it's much bigger country. So for me, it took a while before I like got the right contacts. And of course, um, people don't know each other the way we do in Faroe Island. So it's a little bit more hard. Yeah. <laughs> and regardless of what happens at Dance Melody Grand Prix, you're obviously yeah. going to keep singing, keep releasing music. Um, what are your plans? Uh, my plans is just to go for the music. I mean, it's always been like that. I, I, I just I just love music and I, I don't feel that I can ever live without it. Of course, I have to work or get money if I don't get like huge. But as long as I'm doing music, playing the piano and doing my songs and having people listening to it, I'm just so happy and so grateful for, for the people that will listen. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever considered yeah. modeling? No, not really. <laughs> I think that would be a no, good option not really. as well. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I, I think I'm too old now. <laughs> you have to start at a really young age and I'm like 27 now, so. But, yeah. And our readers um, are dying to hear you sing a little bit of your song. Could you do that now? Yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah, we would just love it. Um, I could sing a little bit of the, the verse or... Great. Yeah, I don't know. Somebody told me forever. Somebody gave me my heart. Somebody said it was over. Someone was dropped from the start. Yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. You don't need auto-tune. You are natural. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> that you took me on guard on that. I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> ready for that. <laughs> A plus, you did perfect. Thank and you. <laughs> a final question for you. Do you yeah. have a message for all of your new fans and new followers on our website, Weebly Blogs? I mean, if you're a new fan, and I'm just so happy and grateful that you that you listen to the music that I've been doing and. I will keep doing music, so just follow up and look on YouTube and Spotify and I will come out with something and I'm just grateful for every fan that I have and yeah, I will just keep doing music, like, so that's just what I do. <laughs> so yeah, so and I hope that I, maybe if I win, that would be so cool and I hope for the, the support. I will do my best and I hope that people will enjoy every second of the performance. <laughs> Crystal will compete in the final of Dance Melody Grand Prix on February 13th. If you are in Denmark and want to see her at Eurovision, please pick up your phones and vote. She would love your support and she'd be a great representative. Crystal, thank you yes. so much. Thank you too and have such a nice day. <laughs> Goodbye too. everyone.